Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm CC, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Stash of It Weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of January, 2015, and this is episode 125. That's a fun number, kind of. I don't know. You can divide 100 by 25. So we're... I don't know. You can divide 125 by 25. Yes. That too. I don't know. My brain's not working so well today. Anyway, we'd like to say a big welcome back to all our returning viewers. We love you. And a big hiya to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Demaris, we have some people who introduced themselves this week, so why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Hillary, who is Apache Nine Rose from Canada. Mm -hmm. Christina, who is Baby Bears from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Kathy, who is Kathy of SJC from California. Yep. Tina, who is GB Penguin. No, P Penguin. No, it's G. GD Penguin. Yes. From Washington. Yes. And Sherry, who is Hot Needle X2 from Ohio. I think she, I think it's Hot Needle Times too. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, hiya. Welcome to the group. Um, so glad that you um, joined us. Yes. Um, Damaris, what if somebody's watching and they're not a member of our Ravelry group? They should join our Ravelry group. And then what? Introduce yourself in our introduction thread and you'll get a shout out on our next episode. That's right. We'd also like to be, give a big thank you, we love you a gazillion times, to Lucy for her money donation to the podcast um, that helps support the podcast and all the stuff behind the scenes, uh, prizes and shipping prizes and badges and business cards and all that fun stuff. So thank you so much, Lucy. We really appreciate you. All right, well, we have quite a bit to talk about today, and we have a big giveaway this podcast. So, stay tuned, because we'll talk about it near the end. Yep. All right, well, we probably should get started, so here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So, Damaris, what's on your needles? Um, I started a pair of socks Ooh, for pretty. a friend, for, for someone... That we're not going to name? Yes, but she probably can guess because I asked her, Hey, what would someone think if someone happened to knit someone a pair of socks out of this yarn? That's, that, that, that's, that's exactly what I said. Yes, to your arch nemesis. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so what is this yarn that you're using? You want to show them the ball? This yarn is Knit Pick Stroll Hand Painted in the Make Believe colorway. Oh, that's so pretty. And you split it into two <laughs> balls because you're knitting them two at a time toe up? Yes. What size needles are you on? US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. And you're just doing a plain vanilla sock? Yep. Um, what kind of heel are you going to do? Fish Lips Kiss. Okay, that'll be cool. So you need to stop about two and a half inches before the end. Yes. You've got tangled yarn. <laughs> We, we were having to rescue a stitch last night. A stitch got dropped, and so she was sitting in one chair, and I was sitting in another chair a little further, and so, like, she pulled this, all the extra yarn out of the bag instead of just <coughs> handing me the bag to help her fix it, so. Actually, you pulled it out of the bag. Well, you didn't hand me the bag. You just handed me the knitting. So. Okay, do you want to say anything else about your socks? No. Okay. So what's in your lap? Too much stuff. Okay, what am I working on first? Where's the bag? Here we go. In my design bag, which it, which what it's become, um, my Doctor Who bag knit, made by Knit Run Dig, uh, is a design project. I am knitting the second sock of the Outlander sock pattern that I've designed. Um, and we're working out still the dates, but it should be going on sale Soonly. Soonly is not a word. Soonly. It is a word. I made yep. it a word. Um, so this is a collaboration between me and Julia from Pandia's Jewels Yarn. And she's having some extras made for the kits. And OMG, they're going to be amazing. I told her, I want one. So one of each. <laughs> so that is what's in my um, Doctor Who bag. Next up. <laughs> well, this is kind of a frustrating knit. 
So let me tell you the story. It is in my Bad Mother Knitter bag that I got from Kelly Connor Designs. So probably about four years ago now, I knit Chris. Oh, dark and stormy night. It was a dark and stormy night. I um I knit Christmas stockings for my mom and dad's house. And um then when my nephew Wyatt was born, I knit one for him. And then I thought I had knit one for my new nephew, Way Waylon, before we left to come to Scotland, but apparently I had not. So my mom was asking for me to knit one for Waylon. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And I tried to find the yarn over here and could not find the colors I needed. So she proceeded to look everywhere for the yarn and finally found it all and sent it to me. And it is not fun to work with. So yeah, when I started knitting these, I was not, I had never been to an LYS at that point. Um, I was knitting from what I could get at the local big box store. So these stockings are knit out of Red Heart. And of course I can't change the yarn because then it won't match the rest. And just didn't know really that there was better yarn out there. So I am knitting this out of Red Heart and I'm not happy about it, but I'm doing it. The pattern I'm using is Mix and Match Socks by Nancy Lindbergh and it, it says socks, but it's really a Christmas stocking pattern. Those are some really big socks. I know, for a giant. I'm knitting this on US 8, which is five mil needles, and I'm using three colors. So it's all um, Red Heart Super Saver. The, it's gray heather <laughs> and white and patty green. Um, you could fit a baby in there. You probably could. I'm about 30% <laughs> done with the stocking at this point, if that tells you anything. It's going to be so big. big. It's going to be big. Um, and it's got an afterthought heel, which is not my favorite, but it won't, be, it won't be as hard to do on bigger needles as it would be on small needles. It's just, they don't fit me well. Afterthought heels don't fit me. So oh, They're not going to be fitting anyone. Yes. So, um, so I started with the gray heather and then did a little uh, bit with the white, and now I'm doing um, gray, or green, gray, white, gray, and just alternating, and then the heel and the toe will both be gray. Um, also, this tells you how clueless I was. This is supposed to be knit stockinette in the round. Did I have anybody to tell me what that meant? Did I think it was any different than knitting stockinette flat? No. So it's garter stitch in the round. So, and this saga continues because my sister asked if I would knit stockings for their house. We're gonna use better yarn. <laughs> when, she, when she asked me, um, I gave her a few options that I can buy over here because that's going to be sh cheaper than her buying it, shipping it to me, me making them and shipping them back. We can just do one shipping. Um, but I tried to convince her to let me do, because she wants the same pattern, um, we're just going to use different colors, um, but I tried to convince her to let me do this stockinette in the round, and no, she likes the texture. So. I have to finish this one and then do six more before Christmas. Well, even before that, I've got to be able to ship them in time so that they get them before Christmas. So. Yes, well, now you know how to knit backwards. Yes, but I can't. That's really hard to do in the round. So I'm knitting a row, purling a row. It works if it's flat, but in the round, no, then you'd have a big gap in the side. So, so I am knitting that. I'm also working on my um, Mama Vertebrae. This is in my coffee bag by Knit Run Dig. It's not going to be in there for long. Um, it's okay at this point because uh, I don't have all the skeins of yarn uh, caped up. I've just got one at a time. It's soon it will be too large. You will have to put it in something that else. Bag. Well, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So this is the Mama Vertebrae pattern by Kelly Brooker, and I'm on US 2, 2.75 mil, and US 3, 3.25 mil needles. And this is Yarnorama in the Cerise colorway. And you've heard me tell the story about the yarn already. So, um, there, this way. So I'm still working on 
this long, 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 long piece. I have not separated for the sleeves yet still. I have about... I just keep going. I think I have about... I have less... I think I have less than 20 more rows to do before I separate. But let me show you how much I got done this week. So I put in the green stitch marker. So I did from there down. Nice. So I measured it. It's about three centimeters, about an inch and a half in there with my yarn <laughs> lying across the room. So um, I did make some progress on it. Um, I have been dealing with deadline stuff. So it has not gotten as much focus as I would have liked to give it this week. But it's get, it got a little bit of progress. And then finally... I am knitting plain vanilla socks because you know I always have those on the needles. So I am on US 1.5 2.5 mil needles and I am using um, with Shortshire Spinners Signature 4 ply in the pheasant colorway. And I'm on US 1.5 2.5 mil needles. And um, I finished the first sock. Sorry, my brain is very confused. I finished the first sock. It's so tall. It is. It actually is taller than I normally make it because I was knitting on it at knit night this week. And you weren't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. And so it's about five or six rows, rounds larger, taller than I normally make it. But I wasn't going to rip it out. Um, it's just my plain vanilla recipe with a fish lips kiss heel. I really like how the heel turned out. I love this yarn. It's so pretty. And then I've cast on the second one. So. Pandas. Yes, there's my pandas. Pandas. Luke and Lorelai panda. That are uh, point protectors. Um, I just wanted to also give out give a shout out about my favorite needles for socks. These are the Haya Haya Sharps. Um, I'm on US 1.5 2.5 mil needles, but they are also available in US 1 2.25 uh, needles. And they are 9 inches, 23 centimeters. And I have affectionately named them my Zoom Zoom needles because I just Zoom Zoom around in, in uh, circles. And um, Jess from Ginger Twist Studio, which is our local yarn short store, um, she has put these online to be able to purchase through her store now. Apparently they're not available online very easily to find. So she has put them online. Um, so I have put a link in the show notes to her shop in case you're wanting to try the Zoom Zoom needles. And from talking to other people, you either love them or hate them. There's no in between. So, it's like so coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're <clears throat> interested in trying some, uh, check out the show notes where I put a link. That's everything uh, that's on my needles for this week. So let's move on to the next segment. <music> to talk about her finished projects yes her. so um i have two this week um here is my weekly preemie hat this is from my top down preemie hat pattern that's a free pattern on ravelry um i am on us sixes four mil needles this week i did the hayfield bonus chunky in the sunflower colorway and the Seardar bonus dk in the flint colorway and i so much liked how the hat last week turned out when I ran out of yarn and had to do the bind off in the stripes color that I did it on purpose in this one. So I really, really like how it turned out. I think it's really, really cute. What do you think? It looks like a Hufflepuff. Um, I think it looks like a bumblebee. <laughs> bzzz, bzzz. You're a Hufflepuff. I am? Yes. Okay. You took the test, remember? No, I don't remember. My brain doesn't work very, very well today. She's a Hufflepuff. Yep. I'm a Ravenclaw, and so is my dad. Very interesting Harry Potter trivia. What are you? Okay, that's good. <laughs> so should I talk about my other yes. FO now? So I finished my... Um, <clears throat> this is another one of my designs. I finished my Rescue Me Chin Boy and Show Me the Stars... Doctor Who inspired socks, the Redux. Redo. Redo. Redux. I think it, it's redo because it's French, I think. Uh, but it's much funner to say Redux. But. Because then you think of ducks go quack, quack, quack. But why would you be reducking something? Because then the ducks go quack, 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 quack. <laughs> what? What? And they swim through the stars. 
First to be chin blade, show me the stars. Someone get those ducks out of space. That's dangerous. They have space suits. But they don't have water or food. It's on the spaceship. Why are there ducks in space? <laughs> because they wanted to swim through the stars. Someone help the ducks. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. Save the ducks. Save the ducks, save the world. Sure. So anyway, I finished knitting. However you want to say, redo, redux, what, whatever you want to say. Perdu. Per, I know this is per infinity. Tre. I don't know. Is it tre or quattro? Qua quattro is it's not French. French. Under top cats. Cats? Yes. Yeah, I love the, cats. Not that kind of cat. All I know is under toi. Under toi cat. I think it's something like cat. Cats. Not cats. I love cats. They they are the cats and the ducks getting along. Why are the cats in space? Because <laughs> they're BFFs with the ducks. Why are they in space? Because they want to be with the stars. Now can I talk about my finished project? <laughs> you started this. Oh, I knit this on US one and a half two point five mil needles, and I used Lisa Sousa sock merino in the violet colorway. It doesn't have nylon in it, but I was knitting this for a sample. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. matter. So here is the finished sock. Oh, can you see the stars? So it's I'm a see stars. It's the star pattern all the way up the foot and then all the way up the leg. Um, but I there is more. I when I originally designed this pattern, it was my very first sock pattern. Aww. I know. And I originally designed it with a heel flap. And then you had to pick up this, the, you had to do the heel turn and then pick up the stitches along the heel flap. And that's not my preferred method anymore. So I have redone the pattern to make it fit with um, the other patterns that I've done. Um, and that makes it also a lot more. Um, Oh, not flexible. I can't think of what the word I want. Wearable. No, a, a kind of adjustable uh, based on your foot size, where the way I originally wrote it, there was not a lot of flexibility in, in needing to adjust it for size. So, I am re-releasing this pattern. If you have already par par purchased, if you already purchased, Purchasey. purchased, I know, if you've already purchased the this pattern, you will get the update for free. It'll, it'll, uh, I'm going to upload it to Ravelry when we get done recording. So by the time, by the time we've time traveled, it'll already be there. Um, I'm going to leave the old one up too, just in case you want it. But, uh, I'm going to upload the new one. Um, if you have not purchased this pattern before, I'm going to be doing a sale this week. Uh, it starts today, which is Wednesday, the 28th of January. And it's going to run through next Thursday, the 5th of February. If you use the code, I'm going to put it on the screen here, all capital letters, RMCB25, Rescue Me Chin Boy 25. I didn't do the whole RMCB... Um, what is it? RMCBASMTS. I didn't do and that. how do you say that? You say it. <laughs> Same. Yeah, but RMCB25 will get you 25% off the pattern for until next Thursday, the 5th of February. If you are in the EU, it is available via Love Knitting, but you cannot use the code. So if you're in the EU and want to purchase the pattern, send me a PM on Ravelry to Java Pearl or send me, send me an email to javapearldesigns at gmail.com and I will send you a request for the funds through PayPal using the coupon code and once you pay it, I will gift it into your Ravelry library. Okay? Okay. That was so much talking, Damaris. Am I done? And only for two finished projects. I know, but aren't they fabulous? I really, really love this pattern. Too bad you can't wear it. I know. And you gave me your other pair. Yes, because I was knitting them for you for your birthday. No, the original pair. Oh, yeah, the original pair. Got felted. They got felted a little bit in the wash. <laughs> so Damaris's foot is a smidge smaller than mine. Not just by much. <laughs> Not just, by much. No, just a smidge. So they fit her. They fit her. They won't fit me. There's not enough stretch in them. 
Eventually, one of these days, I will knit myself a pair. Okay, I'm really done talking now. <laughs> so can we go on to the next segment? Okay, let's go. And now it's time for my favorite part of our show. And yours. Uh, it's both of ours. It's not how it goes. I'm changing how it goes. And no, you can't do that. Yes, I can. No. Yes, I can. <laughs> yummies, yummies, yummies. What are yummies, Mary? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. Am I first? Yes. Okay. So when my mama sent the package, the parcel with the yarn for the Christmas stocking in it, she also put in a picture for me that my niece Lola had done for me. You ready? Ribbit. Is it adorable? Oh, now I look at it. The, f the frog has red eyes. I'm not sure why. Is it an evil frog? No, it's got bloodshot eyes from being up all night. <laughs> because it couldn't sleep well. Why was that frog partying so hard? No, he was having insomnia. And he tried to read a book and it didn't help. I understand you, froggy friend. That's what it's called. Froggy friend. And she wrote her name. Lola. So I'm going to hang this up on our clothesline. We've got a couple of like mock clotheslines hanging on one of our walls with um, postcards and pictures and stuff. So this is going to get hung up there. And I know Lola doesn't watch, but thank you, Lola. I told her already that I love it. Because I love froggies. Not real ones. Pretend ones. Cartoony kind of. Kind of. I don't like real frogs. No. The cartoony ones, they're okay. Our bathroom used to be frogs. We had tons and tons yes. of frogs before we moved. It was I have, scary. I still have a for one frog. No, I have more than one. I have one up there. You can't see. It's up top. And then I have Tad, the blow frog, that I sleep with. Blow frog? Yes, instead of a blowfish. I thought it was bullfrog. No, blow frog. Daddy named it. Bullfrog. No, that, but Daddy named it the blow, a blow frog, and he said it needs a... Uh, fluff a suction because it's so, it's round. It's a big round frog. His name is Tad, and he sleeps with me. Okay, why am I talking about Tad? Because frogs. Okay, what am I talking about next? Okay. Okay, good. So, I got this really, really big bag of y sock yarn leftovers for hexapups from Claire, who is Knits for Clips Cap on Ravelry. And okay. It's so big. I like that one that you're not seeing very well. That one. Susan told me to turn it. I know. And I like this one. And I like this one. Oh, did I already point to that one? Yes. And there's lots of beautiful colors in there. Yes. Ooh, that oh, one's I pretty. See a mini scheme. Oh, you do? Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's trailing clouds. clouds. That'll be fun. It's, it, <laughs> it's so big. Thank you. It's like... It's like a bag of prizes. Yep. Fun. You'll have to really sort through it and see what all is there. It looks like a yarn tootsie roll. It does look like a yarn tootsie roll yarn. <laughs> You're so silly. Okay, do you want to say anything else about this yarn? No. Thank you. So I also have a thank you to our friend Sam, who is Stealth Dragon on Ravelry. Um, she's the hostess of the Knit Run Dig podcast and the maker of all my Knit Run Dig bags. But I have, I have five, one, two, three, four, yeah, I have five, well, and then I have the bag that's not a knitting bag, it's like a little purse, so I have six bags, and more ordered, because she ordered some special fabric for me. You don't need that many knitting bags, because if you buy more and more knitting bags, you want to cast on more and more projects, and do you see how that can be a problem? No. You should. It's not a problem at all. Except for when we're ready to podcast and my lap is full. See? That's a problem. It's not a problem. We just toss them to the side and move on to the next one. Anyway. That is so callous. I know. Sam gifted me a pattern. I'm going to put it on the screen because it's so beautiful. This is the Flare by Vera Valamaki, and I've had it in my queue and want to knit it. Um, it's a four-ply weight um, sweater, and um, it's beautiful. Beautiful. So, I can't wait to knit it. So, thank you so much, Sam. Love you, sweetie. Okay, what next? Oh, I have to show something off. 
I can finally show you this sock. I haven't been able to show you. So the final pattern and yarn for the Doctor Who Companion Sock Club second edition um, went out this past week. So I can finally show you the yarn. This is the affirmative yarn that Julia dyed. And here is the canine pattern. So these are cuff down socks and they're about 90% purled, which was a unique um, challenge for me. So most of the sock is um, canines... Antennae? Anten antennae. Antenna. Antennas. Antennas? Antenna things. Is it like... Whatever the plural of antenna is. No, because it should be single. Oh. Antenna. Antenna. I, I don't know. Well, Any, there's more than one antenna. There's a lot. So they're all over the leg, and then down the front. And then down here at the very bottom, it says K-9. But even the heel, I did a purled heel. So, um... How interesting. I know, because it's not what I normally do. I really like... But I try, I, when I was designing it, I did a traditional knitted heel, and it just didn't look right with as much purling as this pattern has. And it has um, had wonderful comments and things said about it by the club members, so I hope they enjoy knitting this. Um, right now it's exclusive to the Sock Club members, but it will release um, out of exclusivity on the 18th of July. So if you're interested in... K9 says affirmative is the name of the sock. Um, come back in July and you can get it. So my yarn diet is going strong. I have not bought yarn in three months and one day. Although I was very tempted this week. I shouldn't go to the to our LYS because then I'm tempted. She has some beautiful stuff. So. But we're getting there. We're getting closer to EYF, which is, yay, I can buy yarn, but also, oh my goodness, so much still to do. Um, okay, so let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. Would you tell everybody what that is, Demers? Uh, we give you a prompt list for the month, and for each day, you take a photo related to that prompt, and then you post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorite photos from Instagram. So, um, we're coming to the end of January, so we released the February prompts list today. And what are we doing for February? Soup. Alphabet. Alphabet soup. And we had to add in a couple extra prompts because... Ampersand. What? <laughs> Ampersand. Some people consider it as part of the alphabet. Oh, well, we didn't do that. And Terabang. I think we did... Love and the number two for February. So anyway, that's going to be fun. I love the alphabet soup version because you have to be really creative, especially with some of the letters like Q and Z S. and S. Men. So, yeah, that could work. So um, that list is out and we hope you'll participate. So Damaris, what are we about to show them? Uh, two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we like. Yep, so here come the photos. So those were our favorite photos this week. So great job, everybody. I'm trying to clap that I dropped a stitch. Yay. So great pictures. And um, it's never too late to join in the fun. So you should join us. A lot our, of people are posting pictures of their cats. Yes, because they know you love the cats. Well, I like cats, too. I'm just allergic I to them. cats. You really want one. Yes. I really want one. I wish I wasn't allergic. I'll get a hypoallergenic cat. But does that mean they're the ones that I don't like? No, they're, they're cats that, uh, that 
you cannot be allergic to without them being hairless, I think. Okay, because the hairless ones are not my favorite. They look scary. They do look a little scary. <laughs> they look scary. But yeah. They are not BFFs with the ducks. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. <laughs> okay, Damaris, let's talk about upcoming events that we're going to be at. Do you want to start? Um, every Monday we can, we attend one of our local knitting clubs, the Town Mass Knitting Club. Yes. So if you are in Edinburgh or visiting Edinburgh, you should think about joining us. There's All the information is in the show notes, so there's a link and everything to the Ravelry group and all that stuff. So, And then next up after that, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. It's going to be here soon, March 14th and 15th, um, at the Edinburgh Corn Exchange. And um, I'll be vending with Sam from Knit Run Dig there, so I'll have my patterns and we'll have her bags. Um, we are participating in the Podcaster Lounge, which there has been some info put out about that. Oh, remind me, I need to link that stuff in the show notes. Don't forget. Um, so there's more and more information coming out about that. Um, Joe, who is Shiny Bees, has an audio podcast and her most recent episode, I believe it was episode 35, she talks a lot about the Edinburgh Yarn Festival and the Podcaster Lounge. But... Our main part of the Podcaster Lounge, since we'll be in the booth vending, um, is going to be special hashtag GGK Crafty Pad prompts for Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So we had asked last week for suggestions from y'all. We have a, we had a few suggestions put in the episode thread. Um, we're going to give it another week um, to see if anybody else has suggestions. And then we'll pick our favorites. And I don't know if we'll just like decide which ones we want to use or if we'll like pick, you know, like our top I don't know, five or something, and do like a vote and see which two get picked because we're going to have one for each day. So uh, if you have any thoughts on prompts, um, please post them in the episode three. Yep. Um, and then keep listening to the end of the show for the giveaway of tickets to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So, Marish, you want to talk about the next one? Um, sure. Uh, the Indiebra Yarn Crawl this year in Edinburgh. Uh, dates have been announced for it. It's... Uh, Saturday the 13th of June and Sunday the 14th of June. Yes. And there's uh, a link in the show notes about that. Do you know what 3E Yarn Shops are participating? Yes. What are they? Ginger Twist Studio, Kathy's Knits, and Be Inspired Fibers. Yes. So we're very excited about that. So we will be definitely participating in that. And then finally is the Geeky Puff and Nitpalooza Retreat that we're hosting here in Edinburgh. From the 29th of October, which is a Thursday, through Sunday, the 1st of November. Um, all the details are in the show notes, so go check that out, and we would love to have you um, join us. So, yeah. I think that's everything for right now. So let's move on to the next segment. So what are you reading, Damaris? I am reading for four yeah. Fahrenheit four fifty one by yes. Ray Bradbury. So what do you think? It's interesting. Good interesting or bad interesting? Uh, good okay. interesting. Okay. How far are you into it are 40%. you? Forty percent. I don't know how this happened. Well, that's good. You're you're reading it for school. Yes. Okay. Rory had a poster of it in her dorm. Yes, she did. Yes. Yes. Was, it, was there a movie? Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that for you. It's, it's I will ask the Google. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What are you reading? What am I reading? I am reading so my... So many things? Only two books. Um, I am reading my nonfiction book number two for the year. This is called The Furious Longing of God, and it's by Brennan Manning, and I'm enjoying it. I didn't read it last night because my I had a really bad migraine and I knew I wouldn't be able to comprehend nonfiction. So I did not read it last night, but I have been reading it every other night. And then I'm also fiction-wise continuing my reread of the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon, which is not child-friendly at all, the books or the movie. I mean, not the movies, the, the TV show. 
So don't let your children watch it. None of the above. Yeah. Um, so this time I am reading it with all the extras, the novellas, the short stories, the Lord John novels, etc. And so I am currently re-reading An Echo in the Bone. So after that, I have the new book written in my own heart's blood, and then I think three, um, well, I think two of them are, are um, novellas, and the other one is a short story. So I'm making progress on that. I want to get it all done before it starts airing again in April. And then, should we talk about this now, or should we talk about it when we talk about the show? Whatever you want. Let's wait. Let's talk about it when we talk about the show. Okay, okay so we'll talk about it in a second. Now we're going to talk about TV. TV. What we're watching. <laughs> so we had a lot of crying this uh, week. <laughs> so much crying because we finished quite a few shows that we were re-watching. And it's so um, sad, some of them. So okay. do you want to start? Okay. We finished re-watching Stargate SG-1. Oh. Show. Love that show so much. That show is my childhood. Seriously. You want to explain that? I, I, I loved it so much when I was a kid. That was my favorite thing to watch next to Stargate The Next Generation. Not Stargate, Star Trek, honey. <laughs> Stargate The Next Generation. <laughs> that would be fabulous. That, that's what the reboot movies are. Stargate The Next, next generation. generation. I'm not sure if, how I feel about the reboot movies yet. They said they were going to ignore the mythology set up by the show and like... <gasps> Don't you dare! Okay, and then when we finished SG-1, we watched... Stargate, The Ark of Truth, which is one of two movies. Well, one of three one movies. One of three movies. I haven't seen the first one. I want to see the first one now. Yeah, we should watch it. I've seen it several times. So... You have? Yeah. What's it like? There's a Stargate. Oh my gosh! And Gua'ulds and Jaffa. And James Spader. Yes. That's right. So, so now we're watching. Uh, now we're just watching Stargate Atlantis because we have to finish season four and episode one of season five before we can watch my favorite Stargate movie, mm -hmm. Stargate Continuum. Well, honey, you're saying it's your favorite out of only two that you've seen. It's my favorite Stargate movie. I, I that's the one I prefer as well, Stargate <laughs> Continuum. So we will get to that soonly, probably. So. Um, and then, we finished re-watching Gilmore Girls. That show was also part of my childhood. I just sobbed through the entire last episode. She did. I, I couldn't even knit. I was, I was like holding my knitting and just like, oh my gosh. And so now we can talk about the thing that was in reading that we didn't talk about. Okay. So... Now we are reading Virtual Gilmore. Um, it's a fan fiction site, but it's not like one author writing it all. It was a group that worked together to write this. And they wrote... The power of teamwork! A, yeah. So they wrote a full season 8 of, I think, 22 episodes. A full season 9 of, I think, 22 episodes. And then season 10 was their final episode. And it's not... I want to say it's like around 10... 10 or 12 episodes, so it's not as long as that, but um, we are going to read, I've already read them all, Damaris has not, um, so I'm rereading, but we're going to read one episode a day um, so that we can like chat about it together. So we read episode 8.1 yesterday. What did you think? I liked it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. They're trying to set up stuff for the whole season, um, so there was a lot about Lane in episode one, mm -hmm. so... Um, so yeah, we're really enjoying that. We need to read episode two today, 8.2. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes in case you want to read along with us. What else did we finish rewatching, Damaris? Well, I finished rewatching, you finished watching for the first time. Lois and Clark. The New Adventures of Superman. And they have a baby. What? So, oh, remind me, I forgot to say something about Stargate. What's you forgot else? to say something about Stargate. But wait, I gotta finish talking about Lois and Clark first. What could you possibly have to say about Stargate? Just wait. That relates to baby. It doesn't relate to baby. <laughs> what? Okay, just keep Hold doing. on. So, <laughs> what am I talking about? Lois and Clark. So, if the show had continued, it was gonna be something about that the baby was sent to them by Krypton 
They're dead! But I think they're like in a, another time dim dimension or alternate reality or something. They got sent the baby. But it didn't continue, so it just ended with them getting a baby. And both, and both sets of their parents were there and were like, oh. and that's kind of how it ended. Oh, wow. And so we're done with it. What do you have to say about Stargate? What do I have to say about Stargate? So, I was like reading some stuff. Was that yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. About Stargate, like on their wiki and stuff. And I happened to run across this statement by... I told you it before, but I don't think you remembered because we hadn't reached that episode in our rewatching point yet. Yes. What's his name? Joseph Malazzi, the word of God for a Stargate. Malazzi, oh. That's yeah. what I call him. Anyway, he says that after the events of <laughs> Threads... It is only natural. Hold on, I was going to say when Threads was. So it was season eight of Stargate... And it's the episode where Jacob died, which was Sam's dad. But also he was a Tokra. What was his name? As Tokra. I can't remember. Anyway. I know it. I do too, but I just can't think of it. <laughs> anyway, so Joseph said that it was only natural that Sam and Jack were together and have been ever since. I have liked Jack and Sam together since the very beginning. Yes, she has been shipping this for 17 years. Almost 18 years. 18 years this year, right? Uh, yes. Oh my so, gosh. So, this was just a confirmation of my feelings from the get-go. Can you still not think of I can't think of his what name. What is Jacob's Toker's name? I don't know. We're going to have to Google it because I can't think what it is. Is it with We're an M? Mm. Mar no, Mar that was Martooth. <laughs> Marilyn. So we went away and <laughs> and Googled it because it was driving us nuts. So what is Jacob's Toker's name? Selmac. Selmac. Oh. Yay. Yay. So Jack and Sam. Okay, so let's get back to TV again. Okay, so we started watching a new show. Yes. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Uh, Veronica Mars. Yes. So I had never watched it before, and you haven't either. Nope. But we've heard good things about it. So we just started. I think we've watched, like, two episodes of it. So, um, yeah. And then there's the movie. It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. She's works with along with her dad uh, investigating. They're investigators, private investigators. It's really interesting. We're enjoying it. Okay, and then I am watching Felicity season one. I don't know, probably about halfway through the season now. This show is a train wreck, and I've only seen parts of episodes. I just finished watching, what was the guy's name? Todd. Some Todd, I think. He was creepy. He was creepy. He was from Felicity's, they had grown up together. And he's like in love with her, and he's trying to get her to to understand that they are soulmates or something. And then the very end of the episode I was watching during lunch, he got hit by a bus. And then it said to be continued. So yeah, fun times. But it's good knitting TV. So. The Hubs and I are watching Series 3 of Foil's War. I think we watched one episode this week. Because they're so long. And then he and I are also watching Mad About You. We're actually rewatching it. We just finished rewatching season one, and well, now we're into season two. And I am quite upset that they cut the theme song short, and that they all don't always do the end credit scenes. Daddy hears about it every single time we watch it. I'm like, <gasps> they cut it short again. What happened to the entire song? And oh, they didn't do anything in the credits. Why not? And he's like. Should I contact them for you? And I'm like, but this was years ago. They can't, like, fix it now. Or can they? So I just get upset with them. Um, you want to talk about the next one? I'm um, sure. We're watching season seven of Castle as it airs. Was this the second Private Eye episode? Yes. Yeah. I liked the, the where he's, like, talking to himself about, like, in a Private Eye novel type thing. It's funny. I hope that they let him back to work with the with the police department, though. So, 
And then we are watching series two of Broadchurch as it airs. So we watched last week's episode that we didn't have time to watch, plus we watched this week's episode. Holy crap, this show is intense. And I am so freaking confused right now. I'm just not sure what is going on. Because now the late that lady who lived by the beach accused her son, which is friend he's friends with them, of killing the kid. In court. I'm very confused. I'm very confused. Are you confused? Yes. Okay. So but we're still watching that. And then we're, st we're still watching season ten of Criminal Minds. Oh, this was the one where, he, um, what's the guy's name? His friend died, remember? Yeah, Rossi. Rossi, his friend died that he had, that he had served in the military with. It was sad, but it was, it was good to see his relationship with his daughter is getting better. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you're up next. Uh, watching Elementary. This week was 3.11, The Illustrious Client. Yes. Do you have anything to say about it? No, just that Ophelia's acting was really good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they're trying to figure out who it is that that did this to Kitty. Well, now she thinks it's Joan's boss because she heard his voice. So her new boss at the insurance company. So that's kind of how they left it. So what happens next? Uh, three point twelve. The one that got away tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Today. Today, as you're watching this, if you're watching it when we release this, <laughs> but yesterday, if you're not watching it till Friday or several days ago, if you're not watching it till next week, or we try, we time travel a lot. Yes, it is. Yes, is time travel possible? Yes, so we do it every <laughs> week. So we watched the the end of season one of Gallivant. OMG! Guess who was in it? Anthony Head. That's right. He he. I was like doing something with my knitting. And, and then you just hear his dulcet tones. Because he was singing and I was like, wait a minute, I know that voice. You just hear his dulcet tones. And you were like, Anthony Head. And I was like, that's exactly what I was about to say. So he played Gallivant's father. So, but <laughs> the show is so ridiculous. So like at the end of the finale episode for the season, they're singing about... Will this be renewed? Will we just leave you hanging with well, with the storyline? Well, singing kill our ratings. Our Nielsen ratings. They like name. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I don't know if it'll get picked picked back up. I'm not sure how the ratings are. Anyway, and finally, we're still watching Call the Midwife series four. So, um, oh, it was so sad. The baby that died, the twin. Oh, I cried. I cried a lot this week. So, anyway, we love Call the Midwife, though. It's a really, really good show and very, very well done. So, that's all the TV for this week, Damaris. It was a lot. So, I think we probably should move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about our Winter Wonderland cow. And Charity Cow. So, uh, according to our timer, <laughs> we're already at 49 minutes, and we still have a lot to talk about, so what are we going to do, Damaris? Gilmore Road, activate! Here we go. No. Um, so, this is our cow that runs from December 1st through February 28th. So you still have a little over a month to participate. And it's for anything that you knit that you can convince us is related to winter. How do they do that? Uh, a myriad of ways. Uh, purpose, uh, color, colorway name, pattern, pattern name, design element. Or if you can't think of anything, you made it in the winter. That's right. And if you knit something, or crochet, or you know what I'm talking about, okay, that um, that you donate to charity, and you can either donate it to somewhere locally, or if you want to send it to us, we're going to donate to Knit for Peace. Their link is in the show notes. Um, they work with over 80 organizations distributing knitting that, that uh, we donate, and others donate. Not just us. We're not like the only ones. Um... So if you do a charity item, you can post twice in the giveaway thread, so you get an extra entry into the giveaway. Um, um, what else? You can double dip. All that stuff, so we should talk about prizes. So the first prize, actually it's two prizes, was donated by Eileen from Twisting Pearls, who is from Twisting Pearls, whose rivalry name is Twisting Pearls. My brain's not working, sorry. It's on the show, it's on the... Show notes. No, on the screen right now. It's on the screen right now. 
It is uh, two winners will each win one skein of Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock, which is an 80-20 merino nylon blend, 425 yards in the Glacier colorway. Also, we are giving away a set of DPN's uh, Knitter's Pride Carbons. This is a sock needle set, and it's from US 0's to 3's metric 2 to 3.25 mil, and it's six sets of five DPN's, so that'll go to one winner. And then, and it's from our bag of prizes. And then finally, Sam of Knit and Run Dig donated a project bag to us. This is her um, British Birds bag, and it's a wedge bag with polka dots inside. So um, those are our four prizes. Um, so thank you to our donors for that. So Damaris, why don't you give some shout outs to those who have finished projects this week? Okay. A. Bingham times two, Anita Bugs times four, and Fran 25, A. Z. Nitwit times two, Celeste, Counting Accountant times two, uh -huh. uh, Christy Ray times seven, Crouching Cheese times two, Denise Chang times four, Eileen D. Jammin' to Knit times two, Cat Wings, Katie Kitty J times three, mm -hmm. Knit One Brew Two, Knit by Moonlight 89 times four, yep. Little Panda 518 times two, El McCall, Maria Wilhelmina times two, May G times three, yep. Mimi Teacher, Mrs. Neely Johns times two, mm -hmm. Phoenix Fire, Piper's Mom times two, P O K D E J, Twisting Pearls, Well Woman times three, and Ryder Darling. Great job, everybody. So you have a little over a month left to get your projects done. Um, if you need to know how to post your extra post for charity, it's at it's at the top of the thread, of the FO thread. Uh, I believe in post number two is where I put a sample. So keep knitting. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky, Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. So what's this week's question, Damaris? This week's question comes from Francis, who is Francis in OJD from Canada. And they ask, I'd love to hear a bit more about Damaris being homeschooled from both of your perspectives. Have you always been homeschooled? If yes, have you ever wished you weren't? And if you were in regular school, what made the switch? And any advice for people thinking about homeschooling? Okay, so let's start with the first question. Have you always been homeschooled? No. So when were you in regular school? Um, part of fourth mm -hmm. grade through... End of sixth grade. End of sixth grade. Yeah. And what did you think? Um, I, I don't really know. I didn't really like the public school environment. Yeah. Yeah. You're more of an independent learner. Yeah. So, um, and there were some other things that we just weren't, weren't perfect for us. So what made you go back to homeschooling? You coming back home. Yeah. When I wasn't able to work anymore. Yeah. And you asked, can I be homeschooled again? Mm -hmm. So you've been homeschooled again ever since. So, um, advice for people thinking about homeschooling. I have a couple of resources that I put in the show notes because I knew I was going to mention them. Um, we are all about the, um, utilizing free resources to homeschool. So there is a woman who is also a homeschooler. I believe she has six kids, I think. And she has put together two websites. The first one is allinonehomeschool.com, which has pre-K to 8th grade, so these are U.S. Um, grades, obviously, um, and she talks about all the resources that she's used for teaching her kids pre-K to 8th grade, and then she now has high school students, so she also has allinonehighschool.com, which has 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, and um, we are using quite a few of the resources that she um, talks about to, for you to do your high school stuff. So we really, really do like those. We've been part of homeschool groups over the years. Um, some have been good, some have not been so good. Um, right now we're not involved with the one here. We tried it, but it just wasn't a good fit for us. But you are involved in drama and musical theater classes, which kind of filled that need as well for yep. a little a, a bit of outside um, stuff with other kids your age. Uh, and you're also part of the youth group at church. Uh -huh. So that gets you out as well. But you also do other stuff with us. I mean, like, we go to knit night and um, things like that, so, in church, and 
So we have those other interests that you're a part of as well. So anyway, all that to say, um, if you're thinking about homeschooling, just do your research. Um, there's not a federal rule about homeschooling in the U.S. Each state gets to decide, and some states require more things than others. When we homeschooled in Texas, there was not very many regulations at all. We just had to be able to prove that we were teaching certain subjects um, and that you were doing school X number of days. Um, usually, it's usually around 180 days per year um, is what is required. So, but we highly recommend the two resources that I mentioned, the websites, and we'll put the links in the show notes. So, I hope that answered your question. Hope that was interesting for you. And, um, Demers, what should people do if they have a question for us? Um, go to our Ask the Kiki Girl thread in our Ravelry group and post it. Yep. All right, well, let's move on to the next segment. What time is it, Damaris? Giveaway time! Ha ah, yay! So we talked about in Yummies about the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is coming up March 14th and 15th here in mm -hmm. Edinburgh. And guess what I have in my hands? What do you have in your hands? Two. Put them closer. Tickets. Oh my gosh. Weekend entry tickets. So that will get you both Saturday and Sunday into the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> so we are giving these away. <laughs> Um, so sorry. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I'm saying. They are still working on the flat across the hall that had flooding and apparently they've decided to bring big machinery in today that we didn't know about. So weekend entry tickets. Weekend entry tickets. Two of them. So if you are interested in attending Edinburgh Yarn Festival, you're going to want these. So we are going to do a three week giveaway for these. So on episode 128, so that's three episodes from now, which will be on Wednesday the 18th of February, we will announce the winner of these two tickets. Damaris, what do they need to do to enter? Do you know? I don't remember. So they need to go to the thread in the Ravelry group. Yes. And there's going to be a question. Do you yes. know what the question is? I do know. Okay, tell you me. You need to tell us which vendor at EYF you would most like to visit. And we're going to put it... And the correct answer, obviously, is Java Pro Designs. No, you do not have... If you put me, <laughs> that does not give you any extra chance at winning these tickets. We are going to do a random number generator. <laughs> oh my gosh. So are these tickets being given away separately no, or together? together. One winner of two tickets. So you and your BFF can go. Well, me and my BFF? Thank you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Somebody who's watching and their BFF or their friend or their mother or <laughs> their child or whoever you want to take. Two tickets. Um, we're going to put a link in the show notes and in the Ravelry thread to a list of all the vendors so that you can go take a look. And there's when you go to that list, you can click on the, the vendor's name and find out who they are and all about them. So, two tickets. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. please. Tickets. And um, so on eight, the 18th of February, we will draw for these and announce it on that podcast episode 128. And then we'll get these out in the post to you. So if you're interested in attending EYF, you should enter. All right, let's move on to the next segment. We're done with the show, Demers. How did we get through those last few segments so quickly? Get more mode. Gilmore Moe, so sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Between the ducks and the cats and Gilmore Moe. I don't know why I put my hat on. Why did you put your <laughs> hat on? You know, between the dames and the horses, sometimes I don't know why I put my hat on. Okay, well, between the cats and the ducks <laughs> and the Gilmore Moe. I don't know why I put my hat on. I don't know why I put my hat on, even though I don't have one on, even though I own a lot of hats. That's how people talk in bars, isn't it? Sure. Of course. Nice to say, no, that's not how anyone talks. Oh, no. Anywhere. <laughs> no, that's not how anyone talks anywhere. Anywhere. So should we tell them the miscellaneous stuff? Yes. So um, the Outlander Cal, Kilt Me Now Cal, hashtag, is ongoing. Um, we will start talking about it a little more as we get closer to April. And we have lots of prizes. Um, and there's details in the show notes if you want to know all about it. 
Um, a big thank you to everyone who is shopping um, on Amazon website by clicking through our site first. Um, this works for the Amazon US site only. Um, but when you do that, we get a little bit back from Amazon um, if you click through our site to shop. And that money goes to keeping the podcast going with um, prizes and postage and badges and buttons and all that stuff. So um, thank you for doing that if you are doing that. If not, anything in our show notes that is like TV shows, books, movies, like that, um, our Amazon links, you can click on one of those. You don't have to buy that item, but you, you just need to click on one of them to be able to then for it to register on Amazon that you're shopping through us. There's also um, a couple of ads in the sidebar that you can click on. So thank you, though, to those of you who are doing that. We love you because it sure helps. Um, is that everything, Damaris? I think so. So, would you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com. There are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Yes. So, um, I think that is it, th it for this week. We're so confused. I think we should probably just stop. So, um, stop. in the name of love? Wait a minute. No, I was singing stop in the name of love. Okay. Okay. So with that, we will say happy knitting, and we will talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye.